Good morning, new generation. Hallelujah. Psalms 150 says, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. We've come to lift up the name of Jesus, to magnify his name, to lift up who he is in our lives. Hallelujah. Can you just put your hands together and bless the name of the Lord? For he is so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we come before your throne, God, thanking you for today. We thank you for this hour, this moment, this second, God, that you blessed us to have, God. We thank you for a, a sound mind, a, a full heart, and we ask, God, that you forgive us of our sins, God, and create in us a clean heart and a right spirit, God. We ask, God, that you continue to bless us and watch us and cover us and protect us as we go to and, th and through, God. We ask, God, that even through discrimination, God, that you get the glory, God. You remove it, God. This is our prayer, God, and we're asking for a great president, God. This we ask, God, and we bless your name even in the midst of what we go through. So we say thank you, God, and we ask, God, that you have your way. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, we lift your name on high. Your name on high. Be lifted high. Jesus, we lift your name on high. Your name on high. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. Glorify 
praise you, I bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Boy, what a mighty good God that we serve. Yeah. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Lord. Well, this morning I just invite you to join with me in the book of Psalms. Psalms. I'm going to give you a moment wherever you're sharing from, whether it's your, your morning table or maybe you're just still relaxing in a, in a chair or maybe your bed. But we invite you into the book of Psalms, Psalms 34, verses 6. And it's just this one verse that I just want to expound on. And, and that's Psalms 34, verse 6, and it reads, The poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of his troubles. And the word of the Lord has been blessed. I just want to give honor to our Lord and Savior, Christ to our pastor and for allowing me this moment to share with you for a few minutes what God is saying. But well, we see that uh, the time we're living in is far from what we once called normal. And if we be honest, it looks as if um, there's trouble all around us. There's trouble uh, in our country. There's trouble when it comes to our health care system, our public education system. This is how we're interacting and responding to this new norm of living. Um, trouble appears to be just everywhere during this season. And we're so grateful that it's just the season. Because anything that's wicked does not mean that it's permanent. Trouble comes in all of our lives. It brings good and bad. Um, trouble may rain, and sometimes we may even feel some sunshine in the midst of it. It doesn't matter how powerful you are, how rich or poor, whether you're black, brown, or white, what side of the track you may live on, we all experience somewhere in life some form of trouble. The Bible informs us that it rains on the just as well as the unjust. Either way it comes, it's a reminder that it, it's, it comes for a moment, but it does not last always. I'm reminded of, even though we're experiencing what one would call troubling times, and it's easy to say what troubling times are. It's because of, um, Anything that takes us out of our comfort zone sometimes feels somewhat troubling. But I just want to share with you, we are not the only ones that has lived in troubled times. When you reflect back on Job, Job, I'm quite sure, would have thought losing everything, his children, his wealth, his health was impacted. His friends turned their back on him. The wife was not acting as supportive as one would think she would have been. But it was troubling times for Job. If we reflect back on Joseph, Joseph being incarcerated for a crime he did not commit. That's troubling. Paul considered a career criminal, always in and out of prison. Paul wrote the entire Episcopals in prison while incarcerated. I'm quite sure Paul felt a little trouble. And then there was this woman that was diagnosed with a disease. And according to the word, they found no vaccination. It was nobody but God. It was the touch of Jesus. He was the vaccination. And then even Jesus was arrested by law enforcement, beaten and whipped by law enforcement. 
Any one of us can relate to what it's like to be targeted by law enforcement, to be beaten by law enforcement, to have your, a knee on one's neck by law enforcement. We have a system right now that has it at their knee is strategically set up where their knee is on the necks of black and brown folks. Nothing's changed. It's troubling times. But one thing I do know about troubling times, first of all, God has a way of using us when we're broken anyway. Sometimes he can't, that's the only time he can get the best from us is when we're broken and experiencing some troubled times. So we're living in a time right now where God should be getting the very best from each and every one of us. Trouble are just tools by which God fashions us for better things. Worry does not take away tomorrow's trouble. It only takes away today's peace. When we look around us, how often do we really hear some good news? Our country is in trouble. Our economy is in trouble. Our health care system is in trouble. The mindsets of people is in trouble. Our education system is in trouble. Our children's future is in trouble. And if we don't hurry up and get back to service, as what we know church should be, the church too will be in trouble. Amen? But it's not permanent. It's not permanent, so we have something to always look forward to. <clears throat> when David wrote this particular passage, he found himself in trouble. He was a man that was calling unto God, asking for him to be saved because he was in trouble. <clears throat> what does that trouble look like? He killed the liar very successful. His leadership was reigning, but yet his friendship was growing. He was able to uh, befriend Jonathan in a way like never ever before. But yet he encountered trouble because of a man by the name of Saul who was a little what we would call jealous, maybe a little envious. And David is now running for his life yeah. because Saul is after him. That's right. He found himself in trouble in ways that he almost felt desperate. And that's nothing new because many times we've experienced some trouble to a point of desperation looking for the right way, the right answers, who will come and help us through this time of trouble. David was so desperate in the, in the midst of his running away from Saul that he thought about where can I go for safety? He often hid in caves. Yeah. And when we think about it now, um, this pandemic, has us in a way of living in a cave. <laughs> Help me somebody. Yeah. Um, Walgreens, Publix, Winn-Dixie, Walmart, CVS, and Target has become the highlight yeah. <laughs> of our lives. <laughs> Amen? because we're in a cave right now. When this all first started, March, April, it was all right. We were home, we were resting, we were eating more than we've ever eaten before. Um, then we got a little bored to start cleaning up, you know, garages and closets, because we had all of this time. And we didn't see it 
as being troubling times. Yeah. But it was a little down time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then we, we get, you know, myself, if I use me for an example, I would get dressed up <laughs> just to go to Publix. <laughs> because Publix had become a highlight. This time, this troubling time that we're living in has brought a lot of us back down to earth. Amen. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. I have not done my own nails <laughs> in a long time. Or hair. It reminded me of the times of when we were growing up and that's all you had was to do your own. Amen. Amen. But it was troubling time. So now the troubling time is, is weighing in a little bit because Walmart and Publix is no longer as exciting. <laughs> I can use a movie right now. Can I please get a witness? Yeah. <laughs> can I go out to eat and actually sit inside and feel comfortable? Yeah. Because curbside is very popular right about now. Some of us can't wait till the gym open. Some can't wait till we could go get a massage. Some can't wait till the strip clubs reopen. Can we be real in this season? Amen? Amen, amen, amen. I know you all are smiling in your homes because you're wondering when will these places open again? But yet God has a way of getting our attention during troubling times. I'm so grateful um, that he still looks after us. And he, right now he has all of our attention. Um, there's no football. There's no well, basketball is in a bubble. But you, can't, you can't buy a ticket to go. Um, and, and baseball is impacted by the pandemic. So he shut down a lot of stuff so we could realize who just who he is. Come on and give God some praise. As David is running and he's desperate, he ends up in the camp of his own enemies. And you know that's desperate. But he's running for his life. And he said he was thinking, and the Bible does not really give a lot of details of why this was a thought of David, or why he thought he may feel more comfortable and secure in the space of his enemies. But that's not new because some of us live in spaces of some enemies. We know some folks don't like us. Amen? We already know. We work with them. We, we, we interact with them on some form of fashion. Sometimes it's intentional. You ever want to disrupt or dismantle your enemy's empire? You know they don't like you. You know they're talking about you. Walk up to them and give them a hug. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So David is with his enemies and he's hoping and praying that I can stay here for a moment and not be recognized. And most of us like to be recognized. But David doesn't want to be recognized in this moment because Saul is after him and, 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 and he's in trouble. But the Philistines were like the bionic man. For those who don't know, back in the day, the Bible was a movie, a show out the bionic man. He had these little powers and he was able to, to um, to see and hear in certain areas. And that's the way the Philistines were. They knew, wait, who's in the midst of us? Yeah. Yes. And it was David. They, didn't just, they did not just identify who David was, but they were very, very familiar with David. They knew how. They knew, first of all, he, he's the one that killed the lion. They know that Saul is after him. But they also understood and even respected in their own way how powerful David was. Not just as a leader, but even his, um, his um, ability to lead during a within the military. They understood.
understood that he was not just a, 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 a man that was just running to be running. And when David realized they knew who he was and they had identified who he was, he had to begin to think even quicker because he's in trouble now in several ways. I got Saul and now the Philistines recognize who I am. What do I do next? And you know that's just like us when we're in trouble and we've called on the Lord and he didn't respond as quick as we needed him to according to what we thought a need was. We uh, become little busybody Christians and say, let us help God out. I'm going to help God get me out of trouble. Hello, somebody. Anybody ever been there? Yeah. So David had to think fast. And in his thinking fast ability, he reflected back on how God feels about those who are challenged with mental illness. And so he began to play crazy. He began to um, allow himself to pretend to be insane. He began to beat on his own head and get his own head and stop pounding it against the gate and foaming at the mouth. He began to just become the total opposite of who he really is. And some of us, we know some folks that pretend to be insane. They play crazy at their convenience. Hello, somebody. We work with people that way. Play crazy at their convenience. They have some family members. Play crazy at their convenience. But God has a passion for the mentally ill. So we have to be so careful. But the Philistines also understood and knew that God has passion for those who are insane. And because of that, the leader of the Philistines is like, why did y'all let this man in here? I don't have time for this. I have enough insane folks around me. And you've allowed another one to come in to our space and our camp. This was working in David's favor. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When I think about how we can relate to both, I think about we, some of us have played crazy, let me just say that. <laughs> Especially when we come to church. We get this as the crazy ministry, the insane ministry. Sometimes, some seasons it grows, some seasons it, it gets a little low in attendance. But it still exists. So we can relate, we can know how they, they, they plan crazy. But we also know um, with the Philistines how they were feeling. Because while they were watching David play crazy, and some of us behave just like the Philistines, we watch folks play crazy. And let me, let me, let me give you an example. How many of us? And I'm going to use, for example, myself. I love MSNBC. I love CNN. I love Channel 4. And many times, while watching MSNBC and CNN, um, the journalists often do different interviews with all type of elected officials. But it's, it's but one that always catches my eye when he does an interview um, is a gentleman um, on Pennsylvania Avenue, Black Lives Matter Avenue. Um, he lives there in that area in Washington, D.C. And many times during the interview, um, one in particular may say certain things. And I began to look, behave like the Philistines and watch him on TV play crazy. And then I begin to question, maybe he is not playing crazy. Maybe this is the reality of one's life. So we can relate to both sides. 
David pretending and the Philistines identifying. Hello, somebody? But David realized that as long as he pretended and um, to be insane, he needed to, this will, he could use this as a space to get away. Knowing that I may not survive this. They may kill me here. I got to do what I have to do to get out of this space. I got to get out of this trouble. And he began to then cry out to God. And sometimes crying out to God does not literally mean in your voice you're crying out, but you're crying out to God from within, your inner man. That inner spirit is crying out to God, God, hear my cry. Yeah. Because if we, if we begin to cry out to God, and every time, every time we get in trouble, some of us will be in the grocery store crying out, some of us will be in our car, some of us will be in the hall. We're, we're just crying out because there's trouble always around. Yeah. Amen? Amen? But it's that inner spirit that cries out to God and come on and give God some glory that he hears that inner man. He hears that inner voice. Sometimes we don't have to say anything, but when the tears begin to roll, it's a cry out. When we begin to rock back and forth, we begin to cry out on the inside. Because we really only need one listening ear to get us out of that trouble, and that's the Almighty God Himself. Hallelujah. And that's what David did. The Philistines were so happy to see him out of that. And David was just as happy. This is why we can say trouble don't last always. It's just a season. And in the midst of that season of trouble, God is developing us, equipping us, strengthening us to handle some things that we thought we could never, ever handle. I love the Lord for just two years. Trouble and tax. Trouble and tax. Right now, we're in trouble and chaos. We're in a space where we're handcuffed. And all we can do right now is to cry out to the Almighty God. Man right now is scrambling, trying to get answers. Scientists are working over and over and over and over, trying to find answers. Our country is in a turmoil. Who would have ever thought? When we came December 31st, 2019, and we met to end the year of 2019, not knowing what would take place in 2020. But we was expecting God to move either way. Yeah. In the first three months of 2020, everything looked fine. We saw potential. We saw room for growth. Yes. We expected greatness. Yes. This is our season to be blessed. We will be promoted. We will operate in a different type of anointing. We will make a difference on this corner. Come on and give God praise. That was the night of December 31st. January, it was good. Yeah. February wasn't bad at all. Yeah. But oh my God, when March came, life changed. We celebrated the resurrection of Christ at home. Yeah. We celebrated Mother's Day at home. Father's Day was at home. Memorial Day was at home. Fourth of July was at home. And it looks like Labor Day we may still be at home. Yeah. We didn't see that coming. We did not see it coming. We were not mentally prepared. But God's being the, being the mighty God. We're still a family. We're still prospering. 
Some of us have saved more money under this pandemic. It's no need to shop if we don't have nowhere to wear the clothes or the shoes. Amen. We give more. We're more attentive. Amen. Hallelujah. And then who knew that we will see during this season, a season of troubled times, where we will witness on, on television a man being murdered. And it, it, it becoming an uproar throughout this country and out of this country. We saw the realness of systemic racism that has hid in law enforcement for years. Yeah. We've been in trouble for years, yeah. but we got caught up. Yeah. This is not new. But God is just rebuilding yeah. himself. He says, I'm gonna build you up as a people, even in the midst of you encountering systemic racism. I will do the building. I will do the uncovering. I will dismantle. I will. I just believe God will be the one yeah. that will shuffle money where it needs to be. Yeah. I just believe I trust him enough. Shuffle the money where it needs to be. Lord, you know our need. You know our cry. You know our trouble. And this cry and trouble is not God, we trust you. These are praying days, praying times in the midst of a troubling environment. Come on and give God some praise. We bless your name. We thank you, Lord God, for you just being you. I want to leave and I want to just pause right now to say in the midst of trouble, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. God is in the trouble with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you. We bless your name. Amen. Praise God. Come on, let's tell the Lord thank you. We bless his name. Knowing that God will get in trouble with us. God will be our refuge and our strength will be our very present help in the time of trouble. Let's give Reverend Rhonda another hand for the word of God. Thank God for his word, timely word in this season. We prepare now to extend the invitation to discipleship. Our psalmist will minister softly as we minister. We ask that if there may be someone few people, not just within our city, but within our country, that have been sharing and hearing the word of God, here at New Generation, the last few months. We've heard the word week after week, as we've tuned in to lifting up the name of Jesus reminding you that this gospel shall be preached and then shall the end come. We invite you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. We need you to know that in the midst of trouble, in the midst of COVID-19, that God is still on the throne. He's still saving the least, the lost, and the left out. Wherever you may be in your home today, we're prepared to pray a sinner's prayer. That you can accept Jesus as your personal Savior. Or you'll call in to 305-762-9623. We'll share the plan of salvation with you. Father God, I come now believing and trusting you that there are any among us that have heard your word this morning.
You reminded us in your word, how can they hear without a preacher? How can he preach except he's been sent? God, through your word today, I pray that if there is any man or woman, son or daughter, anywhere, God, locally or even out of state, through this word this morning, God, they shall be blessed. They shall be saved. Forgive us and forgive them, God, of all of their sins. God, they accept you as their personal Savior. I pray now in the name of Jesus, God, that you will revive them, restore them, that they will come unto you and give their life. They'll call in God and they'll become a part of this family of believers. And even if they don't call in their God, that they'll accept you and find a home, a place where they can grow in your word. So God, we need thee, we trust thee. We bless thee in this hour. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you that salvation is a friend of ours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, new generation family and friends and loved ones, wherever you may be, let's just tell the Lord thank you this morning. We bless God for being such an awesome God. Thank you, Reverend Rhonda, for the word of God this morning and trusting God even in tough seasons and turbulent times. And so we prepare now to worship in our giving as a church family. We're thankful for the people of God that have been obedient and consistent and faithful in their giving unto God. I pray this morning, church family, that you will prepare to be liberal in your giving on this second Sunday in August, uh, that you will prepare your hearts this morning to be committed to your tithe, continue to be committed to your offering, and your love gifts as we share it this morning. Pray that it's in our spirit throughout the week, even when God smiles upon you uh, to receive an offering or to receive a blessing, that you will remember God even in the season of a first fruit giving to the house of God. I pray it's in your spirit that you, even though physically we may not be together, that spiritually we're still connected. And our hearts and our minds are made up uh, that we will continue to support our ministry through our giving. You can give online, give through the app, you can mail in your gifts, uh, you can drop your gifts to the house of God, but have it in your spirit to be a giver and to share with other family members in the area of giving. Also, we invite you Tuesday evening to share the word of God uh, in our time of Bible study as we prepare to share to you what the Lord has to say to us uh, on Tuesday evening, then this Wednesday evening, uh, Reverend Rhonda will share a community talk at 7 p.m. on Wednesday evening. Tune in on Wednesday throughout conference call for community talk. Tuesday night at 7.30 for the study of God's word uh, throughout conference call. Thank you. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. We're going to give our closing prayer in our time of giving and our closing prayer in this worship experience and we pray that you've been blessed this morning and you will share the word of God with others. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness. God, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you, God, that trouble does not last always. Pray now, God, that, that you will teach us that even in the midst of a troubling season, that we can trust a triumphing Savior. Oh, God, I pray that you will bless our offering. I pray, God, that, that we will continue to be generous in our giving to our ministry, that we can also be a help to others. I pray, God, now for our children, uh, that as they prepare to return to school, in the sense with online learning, that God, even though they are confined in their homes, God, I pray that you would open up their hearts and their minds to learn. I pray for our educational system, God, that all the right decisions 
shall be made. I pray, God, that, that we will take advantage of this day and this week in our time of voting, that we will complete our ballots, that we will drop our ballots off to the various locations, and God, that we will exercise our right to vote. We thank you, God, for men like Congressman John Lewis that helped to fight for us to be able to stand to vote. So God, I pray in all of our communities and our cities uh, this weekend, by August 18th, God, that we will put it into our schedule to make it to the polls and cast our vote. And I pray, God, uh, that the people that have set out to be candidates, uh, that you will help with us making the right decision to put the right people in office. That will be a blessing to our community, our city, and our country. Bless now families. Pull down every stronghold. Look over those that are going through a season of bereavement, God. And you will give them strength even in the season of bereavement. Look over those, God, that's going through a time of unemployment. That you will open up doors of opportunities of work. Pray, God, for those who are not feeling well today, for a favor of healing over their fevered bodies. I pray for strongholds of heart attacks and strokes and setbacks, God, in physical bodies, God, that you destroy the attack of the enemy. And God, give us the proper diet and the proper way of living and serving and even exercising to help prevent these things from happening to us. Touch right now. Break down, God, the barriers even in the area of COVID-19. We pray, God, for a vaccine that, that will come through the help of your scientists uh, that will help to God heal in the area of COVID-19. But even now, God, we trust you and we believe you and we take you at your word. Bless your church and your people. Keep us safe on this campus. Keep us throughout this week in our study and in our community talk and in our family settings. And bring us in on next Sunday, God, giving you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Bless family and loved ones, God, that have shared in and joined in with us, not just locally, but families that have joined in with us in Georgia and North Carolina and South Carolina and Washington, D.C. and other cities and states, God, that and become a part of following the new generation family. Bless them, keep them in thy love and tender care. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. May the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with these people now and forever. Let the church say, Amen.